Hi, my name is Christopher Lawrence. I will be building my own modern, luxurious, eco-friendly ship and container home. This is my story. In this episode, I will be discussing the activities involved in purchasing the shipping containers. I must admit, I am surprised at how many shipping containers have been used locally for home and office space for quite some time. Doing this project has given me a renewed sense for the need for affordable, eco-friendly housing. I take the time at this moment to acknowledge the pioneers of the shipping container conversion trend. Cheers! Before purchasing containers or doing anything, you must have an idea of what you want. Our final architectural drawings have been completed, so we know exactly what we want, how much it's going to cost, and how long it's going to take. Deciding on size of containers. Who says size doesn't matter? We decided to use two 20-foot and two 40-foot all-high cube containers. It would have been my preference to use all 40-foot because they cost just $1,000 more than the 20-foot, but because of space limitations, we had to include the two 20-foot containers. The architect did a fantastic job with the design, so we are pleased with the decisions we made. Deciding on the type of containers, new versus used. Thanks again at Containing Luxury, the ultimate do-it-yourself shipping container home channel, and his August 2019 episode on new versus used shipping containers. I included a link in the description. I was able to apply his list of pros and cons to my project, give it a trinity twist with a point system to make my final decision easily recognizable. Five points, all being reasons why I chose used shipping containers versus new ones. Number five, the industrial look. Used containers usually have some damage. We ask ourselves at this point, is the damage bad enough to alter the interior framing to avoid the dent? or is the dent a cutout in the architectural design? The question is at this point, are we going to leave the container with a raw finish? Our project will not earn a point in this category because even though the majority, more than 50% of the containers would not be insulated on the exterior and I want to keep the raw finish, a new container is recommended. For this one, we're going against the green. So new one, used zero for the industrial look. Number four, let's talk about the roof installation. New containers are basically guaranteed waterproof. So if you're not installing a new roof onto your shipping container home, it would be better to go with a brand new container. The My Green Home Lawrence project does have a roof installed over all the containers. The question you ask yourself at this point does the architectural design include a roof? If it does include a roof, using a new shipping container isn't necessary because the structure is going to be covered. So, use container one, new container one. Number three, siding and insulation. This point ties back into point five. Are we going for the raw industrial look or are the containers going to be insulated on the interior and paneled on the exterior. So that's the question. My project will be using an organic spray foam insulation on the interior, in addition to high quality heat resistant paint on the exterior. Scorecard checkpoint, new containers one, used containers two. Item number two, multiple containers. We are using four shipping containers for this project. So yes, we would be using more than one container. Two 20 foot, two 40 foot, all high cube. The architect's design includes several cutouts and reinforcement situations. So the other question at this point would be, why buy a new container just to cut it apart? New containers one, use containers three. And last but not least, number one, cost. So now this is what is going to blow you guys' mind. The difference between a brand new or one trip shipping container and a used container is about $2,000 US dollars. That is a lot. And cost in this project is a significant factor. So we definitely will be going with used containers. Final score, new containers one, used containers four. Used containers win. Well, for my project. Double check in. 
The size and number of shipping containers confirmed as two 40-foot high cube and two 20-foot high cube containers, all of them used. Now it's to find them. I started talking to everyone I knew about shipping containers. With 13 ports scattered throughout Trinidad and Tobago, where we source our containers is a significant logistic factor. Hi, I'm Jamila, Chris' sister, and another member of this project team. We roughly made 15 calls every day for three days to shipping container companies, port authorities, even some newspaper ads, even our local macros. And finally, we found what we were looking for at Navarro's shipping company, Port of Spain. They had our four containers ready for sale. So a formal request for purchasing information had to be made. Initial contact was made via phone call and a request to inspect the shipping containers on site was also made. The manager who put us on to his secretary, this is where I say a special thank you to Mr. Jaikaran Prasad, aka Mr. Shaky, Mr. Philip Navarro, the manager, and Mrs. Jeanette Finley, all of Navarro's shipping. Also a big thank you to our guide, Mr. Ryan Suku. Shipping container inspection. A day at the port of Port of Spain. One, safety lecture. The first thing we had to do was an orientation session, which was conducted in the administrative office. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic that has affected the globe, there were several sanitation stations and temperature checkpoints before actually getting to the lecture area where physical distancing guidelines were observed as we were briefed on the operations, safety hazards and safety procedures that must be observed while on the compound. Thanks again to the Port Authority security and the staff for such a smooth educational process. So we leave the orientation. Time to see containers? No, not yet. Two, police clearance. We have to get permission to be on the premises. Mr. Suku, our cameraman John Schoon, and myself proceeded to the port police station to have passes issued to get us onto the port. The orientation session is required by law. Cool. Orientation done, passes collected from the port police. Did I mention they gave us a hard hat? and a reflective safety vest? Well, yes, we got those. Did I mention that there were several sanitizing stations and temperature checkpoints before getting past security onto the wharf area where, yes, finally, hundreds if not thousands of shipping containers packed everywhere? I felt small. I mean like really small and a bit overwhelmed by the sheer size of everything. Everything was so huge. The stackers, the trailer trucks. I couldn't stop grinning like a child in a candy or a toy store. It was an eventful moment in my life. And I comically thought, some people see these things every day, Chris. Get a grip. Three, container inspection. So this in itself is a process. Thanks again to our YouTube channel, Tyson Cape123, and his post from March 2019, which gave me the information I needed to conduct a basic inspection of my own used shipping containers before finalizing the purchase. He mentioned a couple of things of what to expect and what to look for. Doors. Once the frame of your container is square, you check your seals and you make sure that your levers working correctly. All these mechanisms are really important in the inspection of your container. Floors. Once again, the wear and tear on the container is visible during the inspection. Sometimes the supplier may invest a little to spruce it up, make it look a little good. What you have to do is make sure that the sprucing up isn't hiding any structural flaws in your used shipping container. Walls. Look for patchwork and spot welding. Roof and ceiling. 
something I learned at the port with regards to inspecting the roof and the ceiling of your container. Go inside the container and shut the doors. Once you see light shining through at any point inside the container, that shows that there is seepage, so it's not watertight. No light, thumbs up. And we have to put a pin here for now. Because of COVID-19, the construction date has been pushed back from June 1st to September 1st, 2020. Number four, payment. Because delivery is within 48 hours and the construction start date has been pushed back by three months from June 1st to September 1st, we will have to go through the inspection process again about a week before the foundation is done. In total, the four containers I inspected would have cost me 70,000 Trinidad and Tobago dollars. That does not include delivery and sitting of the containers. However, because of the project delay, it is highly unlikely that I would get the containers that I inspected a few weeks ago. No love lost, just some time. Forward forever, backward never. As I mentioned earlier, the foundation must be in place before the delivery and setting of the containers. So I'll discuss that further in one of the later construction episodes. In closing, I want to say thank you for the support and kind words of encouragement from my fellow firefighters at Blackwatch, Officer Chandler, Firefighter Alexander, Firefighter Daniel, big up, thanks and enough respect. And as we say in Trinidad and Tobago, laters. <laughs>